Acts chapter 2, verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And I'm going to tell you something. Now, there's a lot of teaching going on right now. But, honey, I want to just tell you something. You've got you to receive. If you don't receive the word of God, if you reject the word of God, you're not going to get saved just because God makes you get saved. You have to receive. Amen? I said amen. There's some crazy stuff out there right now. Um, and the same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. Again, the word fellowship is koinonia. And breaking of bread, that's communion. And in prayers, and fear came upon every soul. And this, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things in common. And they sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house. They did eat their meat with singleness, with gladness and singleness of heart. And praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily, such as it should be said. And that's our confession. The Lord adds to our church. Now, look, I like multiplication too, but you know what? I'll take addition. Amen. Now, we, the, the Lord's dealt with me. We're confessing that we have 100 people on May the 13th. Not just because I want to be cute. The Lord, I wasn't going to do that. I was going to go for a lower number and, and a longer date. Now, how many ever done that? The Lord starts dealing with it, and you start trying to figure out how to make it happen in a way that you can make it happen, in a way you can figure it out. Anybody ever done that? I mean, yeah, I've heard, I almost heard people pray. They've got, they got a $1,000 need, and they're thinking, Lord, just get me 500 I can cover the other 500 Now, he is not the God who's half enough. That's not what he, he said, I'm El Shaddai. He did not say, I am the God who's half enough. He said, I'm the God that's more than enough. So if you've got a $1,000 need, he's bigger than the $1,000. We've got to stop trying to figure out how to cover what he can't make up. God's bigger than that. Amen? And so we're confessing and believe, and we're, just, we're speaking it. We have 100 people on Sunday, May the 13th. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can you say amen? amen. And the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. Hallelujah. So we've been teaching since the first Sunday of January, and we will conclude today. If we have to stay until 10 o'clock tonight, all right? Because when I get back from Rhema, I'm going to be starting something different. or we're, It could be series, a series of single sermon series, you know, uh, you know, Faith Classics or Ed Taylor Classics or something. I don't know. Uh, we'll, just, we'll see what the Lord has for us at that point. But we're finishing the church and her mission. The church and her mission. Real quick, first thing we said was evangelism. You know, God's called us into the, into the body of Christ, and when we, as we come in, we're to evangelize. Personal evangelism. It is not the duty of the local church to have evangelistic services every Sunday and keep people getting people. It's your job to go out and get them saved and bring them here to be discipled. The church is the, is the disciple headquarters. Now, we give altar calls. We open up the door. But I'm telling you, the real truth of the matter is, you are supposed to be winning and then bring them here for them to be discipled. That went over big. I said, that went over big. We got people who spend all their time having the churches win the lost and never discipling the people. We're supposed to disciple people. They're supposed to grow up in Christ. Amen? All right, so evangelism. The second thing was the unifying of the saints around the doctrine of the apostles. Came from Acts, you know, this comes from Acts 2:41 through 46. The third thing was they had fellowship, they had koinonia. They were brought together for the same purpose. It didn't matter what their background was, it didn't matter where they came from, it didn't matter their socioeconomic, it didn't matter what their race was, it didn't, none of those things mattered. They were brought together through a koinonia, a, a, a fellowship. They fellowshiped around the fact they were born of the same spirit. They were born into the same family. They had the same Lord. Hallelujah. All these other things are, have nothing to do with the koinonia of the church. Now, many churches base all their fellowship on these things. The old singles group, the rock climbing group, the, the young people's group, the old people's group, the light, light computers group, the hate computers group. I mean, they got a group for everything. <clears throat> and what they do is they have subcultures in the church instead of having Jesus culture in the church. We're to come together around one main thing. That's Jesus Christ. Amen. So that's the corner of the saints, praise God. And so they, after the fellowship, uh, we talked about, um, uh, where is you? You're on here somewhere. I lost, I lost number four. <laughs> prayer. No, participation in daily prayers. Every guy got my sheets out of order. Participation in daily prayers. There's no, I'll tell you something. Pray for people. It makes it better. You just get better with people when you pray with them. 
Amen. Yeah. You get, now listen, I mean praying with faith, folks. We got some people who can't pray with folks because they're mad at them. Well, you got to get out of that mess. Then, which brought us into the next thing, you know, the breaking of bread, the communion table. We talked about how that Paul wrote and said that, you know, we're to judge and rightly discern the Lord's body. And there's two, there's twofold. One is to rightly discern that his blood was shed for our forgiveness, his body was broken for our healing. But the other side of that thing is this, to rightly discern the Lord's body is to recognize that someone else is your brother or sister in the Lord. And Paul actually says this, and, and he's rebuking them for not doing that, for not rightly discerning the love of other people. Remember the whole letter, that whole passage started out with people getting together and getting drunk while you had poor people over here having nothing. So that to me seems that seems the, the tone with which Paul began to present this whole case about the Lord's table was about not walking in love with your brother and sister. And he comes on later in that same chapter and says this, For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Now sleeps King Jimmy for dead. All right? The lack of love and lack of rightly discerning the Lord's body, your brother and sister in the Lord, brought sickness, weakness, and death into the body of Christ. Paul, so we talked about that. We talked about that for two weeks, so we're going to leave that alone today. And then the last thing, the last point, which is today. Now listen, you can go back from January, the first Sunday of January, and listen to all our sermons on Sunday morning and get all this. They're on video YouTube, they're on video on the website, and they're on audio. You, and you can pod, you can, you can set up as a, to get the podcast, you know, and, and to subscribe to our, our, to our podcast and our video podcast and get all that on your iPod or iTouch or iPhone or whatever. Uh, you can get all that stuff on your computers and so forth and, uh, you know, carry it around with you. And that's free to cost you anything but uh you know you, you really need to go back and listen to this whole series and i know it's uh january so you say it was four sundays of january to four so eight it's eight eight services that's okay it'll do you good i said it'll do you good amen Hallelujah. but let's get down here the last thing was the powers of the coming world which were mighty active in the church and healing the sick raising the dead and having victory over demonic powers Woo! how about i have victory over devils you know, you know, I'm going to tell you something. I don't like demon movies. You ever been in a the theater and they come out and show some paranormal psycho kind of thing out there? And you know there are devils all over it. Why? You start getting goosebumps on your goosebumps. <laughs> you all know what I'm talking about? You know, and you, you know, there's a spirit on that thing. Amen. There's a spirit on that thing. Now, some, some what they call horror movies are just dumb. You know, some guy running around with a chainsaw cutting people up. <clears throat> they're just, they just get gory. Just to be, but I, some of these things they're doing now are, are demonized with, with the point of, I mean, you can sense the demonic spirits coming out. Well, see, I don't live by fear. I live by faith. Amen. So I, I'm not going to subject myself to sit around and listen and look at that stuff. I'm not going to sit there and watch that stuff. I don't, I don't care about paranormal activity. I got Holy Ghost activity. Amen. I'm going to be like uh, Lester Summerall. Now, Brother Summerall told the story. I was, at, I was in a meeting when he told it. And uh, <laughs> Brother Summerall told the story about one time he was in bed. And, and all of a sudden his bed began to shake and began to slide across the room. And, uh, and he, he woke up and said, he said, put it down in Jesus' name. And the bed stopped. Get out of here in the name of Jesus. And then he said, wait. And second thought, put it back where you found it in Jesus' name. And so the bed went back over there. He said, now get out of here in the name of Jesus. I was in the meeting when he told the story. <laughs> Brother Summerall just didn't put up with devils. He, didn't, he just, did not, it just didn't bother him. Just to, just to run. I mean, devils did not scare him. We can't be afraid of devils. Amen. I said, we can't be afraid of devils. Amen. We're the church. Amen. Jesus said we will exercise. Now, now, King James says cast out devils. The Greek really says exercise authority over demons. Amen. We have the authority over the forces of darkness. We're to lay hands on the sick. Amen. As the Lord directs, and, and when the gifts of the Spirit, and, and some things, you know, you just don't go raise everybody. If, if we had the power to raise everybody from the dead, you just go into that at the funeral home. <laughs> Hello. No, 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 no. They, they, they take three gifts of the Spirit to raise the dead. Working of miracles, call their spirit back. Gifts of healings to heal them from whatever it was, and special faith to be able to do it all. And that's just not something you just run out and do. But I'm telling you, uh, th those things happen in the church. And we need to be open to the things. But there are, certain, there are things like healing the sick. That's the, we're told to lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Amen. We're told to have exercise authority over demons. You don't need to be running from the devil. Amen. One preacher came to uh, uh, Dad Hagen one time and said, I want to tell you, I've had the devil on the run all week. 
The problem is, uh, I, I'm a running and he's a chasing me. <laughs> oh man, what a victory confession. <laughs> that is not how the church is supposed to act. Amen? We're supposed to have the devil on the run. We're supposed to show up and make devils tremble. Amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Look at Mark 16. Look at that, you know. And I know a couple weeks ago we kind of started this. And we got, the Lord just led me in a different direction. We're just going to do this whole, this whole point uh, from fresh scratch. Mark 16. It says, starting in verse 15. Afterward he appeared unto the eleven, the eleven as he sat at meat and upbraided them with the unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, go, pre go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Now, folks, I, I don't know what to tell you. There are people that are saying now that the, the, the work of Jesus, the finished work of Jesus, is saving everybody, including the devil and his angels. Because if anything less, is, it's a false gospel. If you teach eternal torment, that's a false gospel. If you're teaching there is no torment, you're teaching a false gospel. Because Jesus said, if you believe, you're saved. And if you don't believe, you're damned. That's what Jesus said. I don't care what television personality preacher said. Hello, with big mega church. Are you here? I believe what Jesus said. Amen. And then he said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. He did not say these signs shall follow the first century apostles. He did not say these signs shall just follow those until we got the canonicity of Scripture. He did not say these signs shall just follow them until some uh, abstract date out there when people who just come up with some abstract date say it so. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. How many believe? How many believe on Jesus? How many are born again? You've confessed him as Lord. You're born of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. You've been baptized into the body of Christ. Hallelujah. You know, there are three, you know, there are three baptisms. I know that, you know, Corinthians says in one Lord, one faith, one baptism. It's not talking about the, it's talking about one Lord that you get saved. That's Jesus. One faith, that's the faith in him and his blood. And one baptism, you're baptized in the body of Christ. That gets you saved. But water baptism is a doctrine of the church. To be baptized with the Holy Ghost is a doctrine of the church. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. Hello. Amen. All right. So he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe. If you're a believer, raise your hand. Wave and say, these signs are supposed to follow me. In my name. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Thank God there is a name. Hallelujah. When spoken on the lips of the faith-filled believer, glory to God, devils tremble, heaven comes to attention. Hallelujah. Sickness and disease flees. Poverty bows its knee. Glory to God. When the name of Jesus is spoken, glory to God. In my name they shall cast out devils or exercise authority over demons. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall, they shall, they shall, they shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall, and they shall, and they shall recover. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I said they shall recover. The church has been emaciated by wimpy doctrine. Hello. Impotent in the power of God because we believe the lie. But I want you to know that Jesus, the head of the church, said that the, those that believe when they take his name, ooh, praise God, thank God for the name of Jesus. There is no other name under heaven whereby men must be saved. But in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of beings in heaven and beings in the earth and beings beneath the earth and confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That name, hallelujah. Oh, thank God for the name of Jesus. I, I, I'm bothered oftentimes by people who pray in Christ's name. Mm -hmm. It was not the name of Christ. It was the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I understand. See, sometimes we can, get, we can get caught up. We can become religious and stuff. And, and God will let us get away with some things for a season. But, the, but I want to be a stickler for the word. And the word says it's the name of Jesus that every knee bows to. I said the name of Jesus every knee bows to. Come on now. Every, the name of Jesus every knee bows to. 
Look at verse 19 here. And so then after the Lord was spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat at the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere. They went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Now, if you don't preach the word, you can't have signs. If you preach opinion, you can't have signs. If you preach God, don't do that anymore, you can't have signs. The only sign you're going to get out of God, don't do that anymore, is nothing done. Hello? You're not going to get miracles if you preach against miracles. You're not going to get healing if you preach against healing. You're not going to get people baptized in the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues if you preach against the baptism of the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. You're not going to get victory if you preach defeat. But if you'll preach the Word, the living Word of God, hallelujah, if you'll preach that which the Holy Ghost inspires and brings your, mind, your, your spirit as a minister, praise God, then the Lord will work with you, and He'll confirm that Word with signs and wonders following glory to God. The church is to be a place where, where the signs and wonders of God flow out of. Glory to God. But today, our churches advertise come on over to our place we got cool worship come over to our place we drink wine with our dinner come over to our place we won't challenge you with the word we'll tell you how wonderful you are how lovely you are how glorious you are and maybe in some back room somewhere on a certain night of the week we might pray for you along certain lines but we can't let anybody know we're doing it Y'all hear pastors going and having stogie and beer parties with their congregation and wonder why, oh, we got a lot of people. You can have a lot of people and have no power. And let me tell you something. I don't want to stand before God Almighty and have to answer for the fact that when I had the opportunity to equip the people to win, I got them addicted to a stogie. That when they were down and out, instead of being able to turn over into the Spirit and pray out of their Spirit and the Holy Ghost and the greater one arise up on the inside of them and put them over the top in complete and total victory by the power of God. They went and got them a good uh, suds draft, Pat's Blue Ribbon draft. Hello. And slurp the suds, smoke their stogie, and went down in the flames of defeat when I had the opportunity to equip them for victory. No, my beloved brother and sister, it may be cute to do all these things and to say God doesn't care. It may be cute to go out and say, I can have my glass of Chardonnay and I drink red wine with this meat and out of this type of glass and I drink white wine out of this type of, of, of wine glass and have this type of meat with it and I have this champagne with this and I'm, we're free and we're liberated. That when the crisis of life come, they're not going to ask you at the hospital if your children are dying and they don't know what's wrong with them. Which kind of wine do you want? You better know how to get a hold of God and you better teach your children how to get a hold of God and to walk in the power. <clears throat> back, in, back in October, we got a phone call at 2 o'clock in the morning from Jessica. Y'all she said, Daddy, she said, Daddy, Shannon, Shannon is burning up, but she's white, she's cold and white as a ghost. Her hands are yellow, they're so discolored. Her face, all the color's gone out of her face. She said, You gotta pray. And I said, Well, pray, honey, we'll pray. I said, Now you get you, know, you, you take her to the emergency room. Okay? You know, we're, we're, just, we're not gonna be foolish. We're gonna we're gonna do that them we're, we're gonna be, we're gonna get on our end and start praying. Right. And she called and she she got off the phone with us and uh, Shannon Garrett. Her now fiance was it there, just her boyfriend. He, she called him and said, we got to go to the emergency room. He was over there in five minutes. And uh, they went to the emergency room and got her in. Uh, called Cindy Duvall. Cindy started praying. And Jesse was in the room with Shannon. And she began laying hands on her and praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And the doctors came in. For, I'm telling you, she wouldn't, she wouldn't call us to give us the first report. Because see, we're, believing, we're just on our end believing God. We, sometimes you just don't need a certain report. First thing the doctor came in and says, I think she may have a brain hemorrhage. 
or spinal meningitis. Neither one of those are good reports. You, you, you don't, don't, none of that is just neither one are a good report. And then she called back later and they said, uh, you know, she may have, they, they, think, they kept coming, they couldn't figure out because they kept running tests and nothing came back that confirmed what they were saying. Although her symptoms were saying certain things. Oh, praise God. But Cindy, when she called Cindy, Cindy said, Jessica, listen to me. All is well. All is well. Hallelujah. Oh, they weren't concerned about what, whether they could drink wine or not, or smoke a stogie or drink, a, drink them as tall suds. They knew how to get into the Spirit of God Hallelujah. and get a hold of heaven, praise God, and get the power of God in that hospital room. Praise God. Hallelujah. And Jesse speaks. She said she was sitting there and she started singing David Engel songs. I am healed. I am whole. From the top of my head to the soles to the tip of my toes. First Peter 2 24 says we were. And if we were, then I am. I am healed. I am whole. From the top of my head to the soles to the tip of my toes. And every time the doctor would go out, she'd be singing a song. And praying in the Holy Ghost. We're back here. We, we prayed in the Holy Ghost. We got, we got our faith out there. And we started speaking life over her body. And I'm going to tell you. As soon as Jesse called me. Something tried to grip my heart. I didn't tell her this. I'm telling you. The devil said I'm going to kill your daughter tonight. She'll die. And you won't be able to be there to do anything about it. I said no sir devil. You'll not kill my daughter. She'll live and not die. And she'll declare the works of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. We got to know how to, get, how to walk in the miracle power of God. Amen. Even when you're 1,060 1, miles away. 83, 84, 1,084 miles away. Oh my. Jesse kept calling us back. She said, Daddy, she's looking better. And after about an hour, she said, you know, because the daughters kept running these tests. So we had to, you know, they, they come in, do, get a bunch of blood work, run out and go run a bunch of tests. And Jesse's in there praying in the Holy Ghost. Jesse's singing, I'm healed, I'm whole by the top. And, and about the third time the daughters are coming in and out, Shannon's up sitting up in bed Indian style, singing, I am healed, I am whole, from the top of my head to the soles to the tip of my toes. And then finally they just came in and they said, it's this weird virus that's been going around. Finally they came back and said, we don't have a clue what's wrong with her. But from the time she had come in and three hours later, she looked like a completely different person. Amen. He said, well, just give her these medications and go home. She's fine. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you something. When your child is lying there and, you, and, and life is in the balance between whether you're going to stand in faith or you're going to give up and let the devil win, you don't give a rip if you can drink a glass of red wine or not. That suddenly is not important. Whether you have your stogie and be cool with the community is irrelevant. You want to know how to contact God. But our churches have gotten where they're being cute and want to make all these points about what we can get away with instead of telling people about the power of God. Because see, if we preach the power of God in our churches, the mayor may not come. Mm -hmm. The upper crust of society may not show up. Listen, I believe in ministering to everybody. But you know what? I'm not going to compromise the gospel so the upper crust can come. Amen. Like one guy said, that's just a bunch of crumbs stuck together with pride. <laughs> somebody else said that. I, I just quote what I heard somebody else say. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I'm going to tell you something. Even rich upper crust people have a hunger to be free and to be liberated. We got to preach the gospel. The church should be walking in the power of God to the point that men and women know that where to go and to get the help they need. Instead of, listen, sure, sure, you can find some kind of uh, a placebo gospel and placate people and give them something so they all show up and they have their social club and they appease their religious consciousness. But God didn't call us to appease people's conscience. He called us to preach the truth and set a standard that liberates humanity. Oh my. Jesse woke up and she took Shannon back and, and, and um, you know, put her to bed. And she woke up and she had passed out in her room. She woke up, ran in there, and Shannon was breathing so shallow. 
She said, oh my. I mean, the first thought that came to her head, the devil's that, that a liar. See, you fell off and let her die. And she went over there and touched her and she was, she was just sound asleep. Amen. Oh man, it was, it was, you know what? It's good to know how to fight a battle. Amen. If we had that food, all we had taught our kids was, you know, you can have beer, stogie, and drink wine and still go to heaven. I guess they could have been drinking beer, wine, smoking the stogie, and Shannon could have gone to heaven and not fulfill her destiny. But she could have been buzzed while she was doing it. This is the stupid stuff the church brings in instead of preaching what sets people free. I know the Word of God works. I know the power of God's available to the church. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. The Lord worked with them confirming the Word. Huh. What's he confirming when you're telling everybody that no matter what they do, you're going to heaven. The devil's going to heaven. The angels, the fallen angels are going to heaven. What's he confirm? What can he confirm? What can he confirm when you put on your church website, we drink wine? Now, I can, I can almost in one sense see, okay, you know what, you're, you're, uh, you're Italian and y'all drink wine with everything you do. I mean, they drink wine in the bottles of the kids. And maybe, you know, and, and, and almost go cold. I mean, honestly, quite frankly, Paul wrote Timothy and said, drink only, no longer drink water, drink a little wine for your stomach's sake and your often infirmities. Makes me think there was some reason they weren't drinking wine. If Paul had to tell them to drink it for medicinal purposes. He said, and then he said, a little. A little. For your stomach's sake and your often, in other words, he kept having some, it probably goes bad water. Put some wine in the water to kill the bacteria and drink it. Not guzzle it hello four tumblerfuls at a time thank you for your enthusiasm but the church was birthed in power Acts chapter 1 Jesus said verse 8 go in Jerusalem tarry there until you be endued with power from on high after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you Acts 1 8 look over there in your Bible Amen. Don't go anywhere. Don't do anything. You got to have the power. <coughs> Amen. And once you get the power, then you're going to be witnessing to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. But don't you do doodly squat till you get the power. Amen. Amen. Acts one twenty two. I don't say Acts one twenty two. That's not the right thing. Oh well. <laughs> Acts two twenty two. That's what it's supposed to be. Ye men of Israel, hear the words Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you. God's approval of the of the message was confirmed by signs, wonders, and miracles. The message, the word, should have miracles and signs following it. People should be being healed, delivered, set free, supernatural deliverances. Amen. But the church has got so caught up with trying to get big buildings and big numbers and being accepted in the community. And driving this kind of car and wearing hand-tailored suits and shoes made by a cobbler. So we can walk around and talk about how much prosperity we got. I can't wait. You know, I believe in, the, I believe in biblical prosperity. But you got to be careful. Because money can get a hold of you. That's three things Dad Hagen used to tell us to watch out for. Three things. The gold, the glory, and the girls. <laughs> <clears throat> All three of them will get you in trouble. Amen. As ministers of the gospel, the gold, the glory, and the girls. The gold being watch out how you handle money. Watch out about money. Be careful about money. Always have the right attitude towards it as a minister. 
<coughs> man came to him back in 1951 and said, we need to take your sermons and turn them into books. You can make a lot of money. He wouldn't do it. It took him nine years until he could print his first book, although he was ready in 1951 to do it. It took him nine years to make sure that when he did it, he didn't do it for the money. And he said he never took a penny from the book sales anyway. It all went back into the gospel. Now you got people writing books and taking all the money from the books and getting the salary from the church and from the ministry. And they're living, they're making millions of dollars a year. Amen. Well, it's, it's, it's right for them to make millions of dollars. Wait, 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 wait. You got a message from the Holy Ghost and you're supposed to make millions of dollars a year? Well, I, mean, I, I believe ministers should be taken care of. I, should, I don't I have any problem with them prospering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course I don't. I don't have a problem with the ministers prospering. But my God, you're making millions. Of, you know, we've, we've had a few, two, two major ministries blow up, in the past, blow, up, blow up and blow in and then blow back out in the past 10 years. And both husband and wives, the, the, the husbands pastored. The wives got famous, got on one of the Christian networks, got famous, and they started writing books. Now all of a sudden they're flying all over the country going to these churches and they're giving them, and, and you start talking about $20 million a year in their ministry? And they have to get apartments in New York City so they can go up there and, 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 and uh, record television. I'll tell you, you can record a television show in 10 bucks too with the $20 million. You ain't got to fly off, leave your husband, and go record in some New York studio. Hello. See, we get we all getting famous, and everybody just having them in their church, and all this kind of stuff. Twenty million? You don't need twenty million dollars a year in the ministry for yourself. Amen. Now, if you're building orphanages and, and supporting missionaries, and I mean, you know, you, I got a missionary friend right now in Estonia. He could use a hundred thousand dollars a year of that twenty million, and he would he would he would do phenomenal things in Estonia with that kind of money. Just $100,000. Mm -hmm. He could do phenomenal things. But we're here, we, get, we get off to so watch the gold. Watch the glory. You ever begin to think it's you, you're in trouble. And a lot of people think it's them. Oh, I am something else. I'm charismatic. Everybody drools. They all, I got my armor bearers. I got men walking around me as I walk through the crowd. Because <laughs> they can't get near the anointing. Mm -hmm. My God, that's what the anointing is for, is for people to get near. That, that woman with the issue of blood got to the anointing and it healed her. Praise God. You ever think it's you? You're in trouble. And we used to, hey, we all got caught up in that. Can't get near the pastor before church. Y'all see me now, don't you? I walk around and talk to people. I can come out here and talk to you about Carolina and Duke basketball, which I don't do when Carolina loses. <laughs> Before the service and walk up and walk and be just as annoying as if it was if I didn't talk about it at all. Amen. Now I will not talk to you about Carolina Duke basketball if Carolina loses. Don't even bring it up because I'll lay hands on you. <laughs> suddenly, and you'll get me into sin because the Bible says don't lay hands on any man suddenly. Larry, I mean, Carolina lost the other week of that, that three-point shot at the buzzer. And every time I looked on Facebook, Larry was out there just, just fishing to get me hooked. <laughs> hadn't heard from any Carolina fans. Hadn't heard from any Carolina fans. They've all disappeared, and I just wouldn't bite. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Brother, I had to cast that line, blue, blue devil out of you. Anyway, <laughs> but we get you know, the glory. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. We're just, we're just vessels used of God. We're men and women used of God. I'm no more important to the body of Christ than you are. My function in the body of Christ is part of the function of the body of Christ, but so is yours. Amen. I don't need the glory. See, if we're going to have the power of God, we've got to get the right perspective on these things. Amen. Don't take the glory. Because I'm going to tell you, folks, and you ministers listening, you're watching somewhere on the internet, you're watching the YouTube. The minute you think you're somebody is the minute you're in trouble. Now I know there's, there's, a, there's a minister in the, in the community that goes around telling everybody, say, I am somebody. No, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. Everything I am is because I'm in Christ. You take me out of Christ and I am, my righteousness is as filthy rags. My tongue is full of lying. Now listen, but in Christ, I'm a new creature. 
old things have passed away and behold all things have become new. I don't confess I am somebody. I confess I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. And oh the power is Christ in me. The hope of glory that makes me what I am. Praise God. Are y'all here? You've gone home. I don't take the glory. We lay hands on the same. Brother Hagin, you said, he'd he be praying for people. People go, hey, that Hagin fella healed somebody over there the other night. He said, no, I didn't. They didn't go on the line on me. Jesus is the healer. Amen. I said, Jesus is the healer. Amen. Man can't heal. <coughs> We're vessels for the anointing. It's not us. Amen. Benny Hinn can't heal a gnat's wing. It's the anointing. He's just a vessel. You take the anointing away. Are you here? The anointing is not present. I mean, you understand what I'm saying? Now I know we can minister the word, but then it's, still, then it's the word. It's their faith in the word. It's either someone's faith in the word or the anointing of the Holy Ghost is not the man. Man's just the vessel. Amen. We're just, we're just the, the conduit. We're just the vessel which God used. It's not us. Don't ever take the glory. Be careful to give God all the glory. And the third thing is the girls. Now let me tell you something, stud. You might think button button your shirt down here and showing your your gray chest hair with your gold Mr. T jewelry is <laughs> something else. But the only reason women are attracted to you is because of the power, the position of power you stand in, not because you some hunk. <laughs> you suffering from Dunlap's disease. Your belly done lapped over your belt, chest and drawer disease, your, your chest has done dropped into your drawers. <laughs> Hello? And then some young hot babe comes along and starts flirting with you like you, like you as, uh, I mean, uh, Sylvester Stallone and Rambo 1. Are you here? You go home. It ain't you. It's just the position of power you have. Hello? Women, fleshly carnal women, are attracted to power. Amen. Now, godly women are, but, but fleshly women are. And godly women don't dress like skanks. Amen. Hello? Are you here? Now, we, we're training our son, you know, the difference between a good girl and a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're at, the, we're at the wrestling match on, was it Friday? And this girl comes walking in. I mean, she's got on a skirt up to the wazoo's with, you know, black tights and boots and bangled all up all over the place, lipstick and everything. I mean, and, you know, I mean, she's looking, I mean, she's probably 14 looking like she just got through turning tricks down there in Charlotte somewhere. And she comes walking and sits up pretty near us. And, J and I turn to Janie. I said, now, Nathan, if he was sitting up here, he'd look at you and go, Mommy, she's a hoe. We look over at him, and he's got this big grin on his face. And he looks at her, and his mommy goes, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, me. He's finally figured out the good girls and the bad girls. But the devil will send the skanks your way. Yeah, they'll come flirting with you. And men, don't be so stupid to think. You can't suck that gut in enough. <laughs> you pull it, you're trying to pull that, that stomach in, it just, I mean, it just, it just won't work. But she's got the hots for you. No, the devil sent her. She's an emissary of the devil. If you want the power, you're going to have to leave them alone. That's right. Matter of fact, if you're married, you better leave them all alone. And if you're not married, you better keep yourself right for the right one. Amen. Hello? Now, the nice thing is, if you are married, you can just go and go to heaven if you start messing with them. Because if you've got a wife like mine, she will kill you. <laughs> so, Janie told me, we got married. She said, honey, I love you. But if you ever cheat on me, I will kill you. The Lord will forgive me for killing you. <laughs> the church won't forgive us for a divorce, but God will forgive me for killing you. So just, just know right up front, she's Cherokee, you know. Yeah. And she's Cherokee. Yeah, Miss, Miss, Miss uh, C knows something about that engine blood. And she just let me know right up front, I'll kill you, you mess around on me. And I'm going to tell you, the look in her eyes, it's scared adultery. As far as the east is from the west from me. 
I'm telling you what's the truth. No, I'm, I'm just messing now. <coughs> if you're going to have the powers of the world to come, we've got we to guard ourselves. <coughs> Ministers, watch out for the gold, the glory, and the girls. Amen. Keep yourself pure and undefiled from these things yes. so that God can use you for the glory of the kingdom of God, for the glory of God, not for yourself, but for Him. Amen. Oh, my. Dad said every, every penny they ever made off of any book went back into the gospel. They've sold millions of books worldwide in different, and I forgot, 20 or 30 different languages. They've been all over the world with the gospel through the books they've printed. Made it, made it in places you couldn't even imagine they make it. The word's gotten into. And the money went back into the gospel to reach people. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. God approved Jesus with signs, wonders, and miracles. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, verse 32. Um, this God, Jesus, whom God raised, from, uh, raised up, whereof we are all witnesses, therefore being by the right hand of God exalted. And having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, which he has shed forth, which you now see and hear. That was the outpouring of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. Amen. Chapter 3, verse 15. This man, this man had been raised up as an implement man at the gate called Beautiful. They walked by and Peter and John said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately he began to walk. People got mad. People get mad when people get healed. I don't understand that. You know, that's a religious devil. If someone you know gets healed and they're giving glory to God, you ought to jump up and down and run around and rejoice with me if your church don't teach that. So well, I, don't, I, mean, I understand everything, but you know they're giving the glory to God. Um, I told this the other day, but the Wesley brothers, John and, and Charles Wesley, they come to America to, to go minister to the Indians in, in, in Georgia, in Cher apparently the Cherokee, for a year. Came back flat failures. And on the way back to England, they ran into some Moravians, and who, in their own words, said, uh, we, um, they explained to us the deeper things of God. Now, one minister says, he, he honestly thinks they just got born again at that point. Amen. Hallelujah. And so they went back to England. They began to preach some things. They got kicked out of the church for preaching the new birth. He went out there and stood on his daddy's tombstone and finished his sermon. Came back to America and started the Methodist Church and the Wesleyan Church came out of their ministries. But um, I, I believe Charles was ministering in a service and people started falling under the power. Nobody knew what it was. He got to preaching the word, and the power, what God starts showing up with signs and wonders. People start falling out in the power, and they begin talking. What, what is this? We don't know what this is. Is this God or the devil? He said, "I don't know. Let's just see what they say when they wake up." And the first woman that came out and went, "Glory to God!" He said, "It's God." <clears throat> the devil ain't gonna give you, give you to give glory to God. Right. I said, "The devil's not gonna move on your life and cause you to give glory to God." Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Signs, wonders, and miracles. I'm telling you right now. You take a sick person and they get healed by the power of God. They're running around giving the glory to God. You ought to run with them even if you don't believe in it. Maybe you're wrong. Hello. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, let's look at 1 Corinthians 2.4. I'm going to stop here. We're just going to conclude our series with this statement. For, or, or, or along this line. I know it's a little after 12. Stay with me. Don't run out. If you do, the ushers will tackle you. <clears throat> Acts chapter, I mean, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1 says, And I, brethren, when I came unto you, came not with excellency of speech or wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. We got so many people who, who try to be so articulate. Now, God, <laughs> and just spit a <laughs> Oh, you can't listen to Ed tell it. He's an Eastern Carolina boy. He can't even talk right. Paul said, I came not with excellency of speech or of excellency of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and fear and much trembling. Listen to this, verse 4. And my speech... And my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. That's a lot of what we got in the pulpit today. We trick people with enticing words of man's wisdom. We use big theological terms that make them feel stupid. It's just a manipulation in that tactic. 
to make them feel stupid and they must have to listen to you because you've got the knowledge and the, the wisdom and you've got all this great education. Dad Hagen one time said about some of these people who were teaching some of the stuff they taught and they had PhD and all that stuff behind them and he finally figured out that PhD meant post hole digger because a post hole digger got more sense than what they had. Amen. Amen. Preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, listen, but a demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Why, Paul? Why is it that you wanted to be preached with a demonstration of the Spirit and power? Verse 6, verse 5, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Amen. Glory to God. I said, Glory to God. Paul said, I will not come and preach a message that tickles your ear, that, that manipulates you with fanciness. That I'm using, I remember a number of years ago they had this guy around, he's preaching on the Merimos. And everybody's running around talking about the Merimos. It was a Greek word that meant something. And they, I saw everybody talking about that Greek word. Half of them didn't know what it meant. They just kept repeating the Merimos, the Merimos, the Merimos. And they all felt real spiritual and big, inflated, and, and puffed up because they had this word they were speaking. Have you heard of the Mary Mose? No, but I've heard of Jesus. <laughs> Hello? I've heard of the Holy Ghost. And I know this much. If I have faith in him and his word, him and the Holy Ghost will show up and they'll do what the Mary Mose ain't doing. Hello? You run off and be, be cool and you got your fancy words and all, whatever. But I got G. I, like Sandbot used to say, I got my BA and my BHG. Glory to God. I'm born again and got the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Yeah! <laughs> Yeah, I got my degrees, B.A. and B.H.G. I'm born again and I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Now, I'm not saying don't be study, a student. The Bible teaches us to be a student of the Word. The Bible teaches us to feed on the Word. The Bible teaches us to renew our mind to the Word. But do not be caught up with enticing words of man's wisdom with cute little things. With cute doctrines. The Bible does not teach radical grace. It teaches grace. It doesn't teach radical salvation. It teaches salvation. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you here? You're going home. I believe in radical grace. Well, I believe in Bible grace. Hello? I'm not caught up with the cuteness. Well, are you a secret sensitive church? No! I'm a Holy Ghost sensitive church. Glory to God. We're sensitive to the Holy Ghost. Let him have his way. I don't, listen, listen don't say this wrong. I'm not concerned as much as whether I grieve you. I'm more concerned if I grieve the Holy Ghost. Because if I don't grieve him, he can fix you. But if I spend all my time trying not to grieve you and grieve him, then I have nothing to fix you with. Because I lose his anointing, his power, and his presence. And he's the one that has to be able to work and to function and to minister and to do his will in our midst. The Bible doesn't say grieve not your fellow believers or the unbelievers. It says grieve not the Holy Ghost. Hello? Y'all hear you going home. In the church, if we would get back. Now, I'm gonna say, I grew up classical Pentecostal. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Now, yeah, they had some stuff wrong. I mean, you know, but you don't throw the baby out of the bathwater. They tarried for the Holy Ghost to get the Holy Ghost. No, 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 you're supposed to tarry after you get the Holy Ghost. You wait on God with the Holy Ghost. You don't wait for him. He's already here. They were tearing back at the book of Acts. He hadn't showed up yet in the manifestation of, the, of this dispensation. Y'all here? But I'm going to tell you something. When the Spirit of God was a manifestation, I don't care how old you were, you didn't do doodly squat. You sitting there over there joking and cutting up there in the manifestation of the Spirit, Grandma knew the, the place on your temple, the thump. <laughs> <laughs> it near about cold cock you. Pow! 
the Spirit of God's at work. There was a respect and an awe of the presence of God. Dad Hagen took so much flack for the 1987 camp meeting plans, purposes, and pursuits and the subsequent book. He was called a false prophet by the leading worship magazine in the country. Because he said clapping is neither praise nor worship. They called him a false prophet because they stepped on their little worship toes. We got to come together and we got to do a little dance and we got to clap, clap, clap. Instead of recognizing the Spirit of God was saying, you're dissipating the anointing on fleshly responses. And you're short-circuiting the power of God to help people. Because you want to be able to go, let's do the toss of two-step. They all came out of one church and you picked up some little Jewish dance and everybody thinks it's, it's, and, it's, and they start making fun of the old Pentecostal because they did the funky chicken. Yeah. Hello. I think some people when they get done doing that guy come get healed from neck problems. <laughs> I believe I'm listen, listen, you understand. I'm not listen. if you're responding to the Holy Ghost and you're dancing, I, I had no problem with it. But when, when somebody stands up and says God, Jesus says, clap is neither praise nor worship. And stop substituting brass for gold. As a matter of fact, it wouldn't hurt you to go back and read plans, purposes, and pursuits, or listen to the tape series. And understand that the atmosphere the church needs is an atmosphere where we don't grieve the Holy Ghost. And He can work in our midst. Like one guy said, there's some places, they got so much fog in their church sanctuaries because of the fog machines, they wouldn't know if the glory cloud showed up or not. <laughs> and that thing he talked about, there'd be a cloud in the whole building, everybody that got in that cloud fell out in the spirit. And there'd be bright flashes of light, not from the disco ball. But the power of God and the Holy Ghost shouldn't be, and everybody in the building, say unsaved, not filled with the Holy Ghost, and sick, were in the altar, healed, born again, and baptized in the Holy Ghost. Power of God showed up. Well, I don't believe that. Well, I don't care. I really don't care. I've seen God do stuff. I've been involved in seeing the power of God manifest. I've, I've prayed for handkerchiefs and stuff, and people with tuberculosis and different kinds of diseases healed. We have a Goron lady in our church healed of cardiomyopathy. We have, you know, all kinds of miracles have taken place over there. I've seen them. I don't care if you believe it or not. That's not my business. I just know it does. And God has. God will. And He'll continue. And He's going to continue because I will not compromise our purpose as a church honor the Lord in what we do and stop trying to be cute to make society like us. Because what you win them with is what you got to keep them with. If you win them with a bottle of Chardonnay, you're going to have to keep them with a bottle of Chardonnay. Hello? Amen? Well, I know somebody got saved and they were drinking. I, listen, I, listen, understand this. God gives, gives mercy from the Lord. My pastor. Now my pastor got saved. And when his brother found out he had gotten saved, his brother, Dave, who's now the assistant pastor of the church they're in, showed up at his house with a six pack and said, hey, I heard you got saved. Let's celebrate. They had been saved just a few weeks. My pastor used to, it was the best joint roller he, that anybody knew. He'd be out witnessing the people rolling the joints for him and lighting them. <laughs> and telling them about Jesus. Well, listen, the Lord dealt with him. He got out of that. The Lord dealt with him. I understand, you know, you give people some room for God to deal with them about the flesh and stuff. He just knew he loved the Lord. And, and he, he was just, he'd roll it, twist it, light it, hand it to him and say, now you need Jesus. He was so yellow from using dirty needles with hepatitis, they called him Chiquita. God healed him. He don't, he don't roll joints anymore. He don't, he don't celebrate by drinking a beer. I understand some things you get the people do as babes and it's stupidity and, and ignorance. God winks at that for a season. But when the church advertises we drink wine and we're, we're drinking smoky and we're smoking stogies and drinking beer, the ministers should know better. And they're wondering why there's no power. Listen, we've got to have the power. Because next week, Ellie may need the power. Are you here? Harold might need the power. 
and you don't need to try to figure out where it is. Are you here? Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the word. Thank you for our time together. We thank you for our mission as a church and part of the church. Help us, Lord, to hold fast the sound words of doctrine from the word of God and walk in the light as you're in the light. Lord, Father, as the word has come, may the interest of that word give light to us so we have clear understanding of the purpose we have as members of the body of Christ to reach the nations with the good news of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Every head bow, every eye closed. If you're here today, you're not born again. I mean by that, Jesus is not coming to your heart. You're not born again. Would you raise your hand? I want to pray with you. Anybody here is not born again? Say, Pastor Ed, I'm born again. I backslid. I've just gone out and out like a heathen. I'm not right with the Lord. I know I'm not right, but I want to get right with the Lord today. Raise your hand. I pray with you. Now, if you're born again, you say, well, I, I love God. I'm born again. But I, I've heard you talking about speaking in tongues, being baptized in the Holy Ghost. I want to receive all God has. If you're here today and you're not baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, raise your hand. We'll pray for you. Get your feel. All right. Look up at me. We just make sure we don't leave anybody out. We want to make sure we give everybody an opportunity. Amen. Now, make sure you come back and, and be coming all in between. We come back on May the 13th because we're going to have 100 people in that service. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.